Hello everyone, welcome to Reality Is Where Words Do Come To Life. Look, I'm making this video because as we know, as we sing, as it constantly replayed over and over again, our judicial system is flawed. I've said this a thousand and one times over and over again. It is amazing to me that when it comes down to people of color, they get every count throw at them from A to Z. It also amazes me that when it comes down to white people who may get a slap on the wrist, who may end up in court, they don't get that much on their list. And it can be clearly stated and clearly shown that they are the guilty parties. But when it comes down to people of color, it is automatically assumed that this person is a criminal that they don't have no college background, that they're not a good upstanding citizen, that what they have done is very justifiable. Now, here is where it doesn't make sense, right? So you have the state's attorney office who is supposed to defend whoever the person is. And then you have the other side who defend the person that's being accused, right? Now, it used to be long time ago, you were innocent and you had to be proven guilty. Now you are definitely guilty because you're of color and you have to fight for your innocence. Not taking into account that you have no priors on your record, not taking into account to the evidence that's clearly shown, but you take an account of assumption. You take an account of what you think. And I thought for the state's attorney, for the prosecutors, they always supposed to go on the evidence. What do the facts show? But as we seen played over and over again, that is not the evidence, is not the facts that's shown. We also have seen um, lately, and a lot of this lately, that those individuals have of color have been incarcerated for 20 plus years for crimes that they said they was innocent of and the system saw them guilty. Now here's the flip side to it. Judges are just as accountable as anybody else. But when the judge make the wrong decision because somebody has forced the wrong information because the person is of color, no one is held accountable, which makes it kind of difficult to trust the system. When the state's attorney office does not look at the facts to be facts, but they look at the facts and assumption and make the assumption facts, that draws um, question. It makes you wonder. Yet and still, uh, when you go to trial, when you go and they give you the oath and you promise to tell the whole truth and nothing but truth will help you, God, you're asking the person who's sitting in the seat to tell the truth, but the person that's being the representative is not being honest and not being truthful because evidence shows something else, but nobody want to look at that. And it's funny that when it comes down to people of color, they get the harshest sentence. There is no leniency. There is no give. There is no conversation. Compromise, there is nothing. It's just straight to the point. It's always the maximum. And when people of color does something, it's always those individuals, they are guilty. They can't be trusted to be let out. They, their bonds are refused. Um, they are a threat to society. But nobody made Cal Rittenhouse a threat to society. A threat to society. Nobody. Nobody made her. And his justification when he went to a state a city, uh, a state that was not his concern when he left Illinois to go to Wisconsin, it was not his concern as an underage adult, even though he was with his mother, his parental parent. But they justified it and he got off scot-free. But it's amazing to me when it come down to people of color, there is no give whatsoever. It amazes me that Jason Van Dyke, who shot Laquan McDonald 16 times, only did three years. It amazes me, yet and still, those individuals of color in a 20, 25, 30, and 70 years or even life 
for one bullet. But here is an ex-officer who got off with three bullets. And I don't even know if he got the true sentencing. And on the flip side of that, they did his sentencing secretly. The insurrection of the Capitol, we still don't know the extent of their sentencing. Breonna Taylor's, um, your George Floyd, your Ahmaud Aubrey, you know, your, your Sandra Bland's, your Tamir Rice, um, Fidel Castile. It's amazing to me when it come down to us, we get the short end of the stick. Nobody sees what been, was being done to us as being justifiable. But at the same time, we see when we defend ourselves, when we, we react to an action that somebody else has caused, that we seem to take it as first degree um, felony, intent, and all those things. And it's like 13, 14, 15, 16 counts. So why is that? Why is that? Why is that that individuals sit in Cook County Jail for years and years on at a time and they are just sitting there? It doesn't take you that long to compile evidence. And here is the flip side, the connections. The connections already make the trial not fair because who you are tied to. Now, understanding, please don't get me wrong. We understand that no one wants their loved one's life taken, and I'm not advocating that. But when you react, when you cause an action, you cause a reaction. And you got to know that gotta, there's, going, there's going to be consequences for the actions. What I don't like and what I have a problem with is that in each state, in each city, um, it's always made out to be that the black person is always wrong. It's never made to be that you are actually doing your job the right way. Now, you may say, what are you, what are you, what are you referencing? So we have a situation here in Illinois in Kim Fox's office. Now, assumptions, you know what they say about assumptions. So we're supposed to lean on facts. We're supposed to lean on what we see and not what we're thinking. In most states, anybody who works security should be identified as such across the board, right? Everywhere you go, even the president of security is identified as security. Even the motorcade is identified as the person who's protecting him. You will not open the door for somebody who said verbally they was a police officer and did not represent the uniform, nor did they have the badge that represented the police officer. You will not let anybody work on you who said they was a doctor unless they had the credentials and they represented and they wore the clothing of a doctor, right? You would not believe somebody to be a construction worker unless they had on the clothing that represents a construction worker. So how, in fact, do we justify anybody, any field, security that does not have security, 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 and security? Please help me understand. And why is it that those of color end up with the short end of the stick. And why is it that we have to fight for our family members the hardest to get the truth? To get the truth and be fair. Be fair. But that, that don't happen in no cases. In no cases whatsoever. I have a friend who has a son in Statesville that's still sitting there on Accountability Act. You all know these people. Some of these people end up with cancer. Some of these people end up with bad hearts and everything else because of the conditions of these facilities. These facilities are not housed to um, regenerate, um, to rebuild, um, none of that. But it is a, a definitely a money maker, and we trade in the bottoms of the boat with the wood and the chains for the jail cells. And nobody is occupying these facilities except for those of color. So it it, it puzzles puzzles me to know and think that we think this country is fair. See, we'll take care of immigrants. We'll go to the extent to take care of immigrants, but we won't do right by black people by no means necessary. Everything that happens to us, we are either premeditated or we set it up or we was gang bang or we was thugging from the beginning. And that's not always the case. There are plenty of black people who are out here that has education, that are very intelligent. So to lump everybody in the same bucket and to stereotype um 
individuals, that's wrong on so many levels, so many levels, and it needs to be changed. And if our state's attorney office, if our judges, if those in authority are going to disregard the proof, are going to disregard the evidence, are blatantly going to go on assumption and make a case without facts, um, then we have to question the validity of our system in which we call due justice. Because as far as I'm concerned, from years, from months, days, second minute, hours, it's just us. And we always end up with the short end of the stick. And we have these state attorneys that get in office like Kim. I know people speak up for you and everything else. But it saddens me. It breaks my heart. It's very disappointing to know that when it comes down to those of color, whether it's minor, minor things like the Jesse Smollett thing or great things like Laquan McDonald, we don't get no breaks whatsoever. We don't get no slaps on the wrist. We get punches and we get knocked out. And you snatch our life without even considering what you're doing. You snatch it. You're not looking at evidence. And this system is not fair. Even the judges that sit on the bench, they want another notch up on their belt. Locked up another black person. Stole another black person in life. Yep, did that to them. He won't be out 75 years. But yet still we let out these criminals who are professional criminals all the time. They get to walk away. Yet and still when white people do stuff, you get a slap on the wrist. Saw the video. Uh, not too long ago when the white guy did something and they took him out and laid him gently on the ground and released his cup and after he won't any water. When you see a black person um, get laid gently on the ground, when did you see a black person with their handcuffs uh, loosened up? When did you see a black person being offered some water? The other person who did the mass shooting, he went and got a, they gave him a burger. So you, how do you make this system make sense and how do you make it fair? Because it's not. And I'm so disappointed in every senator and every um, state representative and every mayor, governor, uh, state's attorney office that allow this type of behavior. And even our justice department, our president, our vice president, and you all think it's okay. And y'all don't see no need to reform the system that is damaging to people of color. Very disappointing. And I keep saying this and I'll say this till Jesus return. Y'all playing with God's people and he getting tired. He's getting tired and he's getting to a point where he's saying enough is enough and y'all need to do right by people. You wouldn't want anybody to treat you like that. You would want somebody to base their, their argument on facts and not assumptions. And the facts show you what happened in incidents that you all truly disregard. And that right there is so sad and pathetic. So, no, I don't think we need any leaders. I don't think we need anybody governing anything because you ought to know better than the common criminal. Y'all criminalize in a different way. You criminalize by lying on people. You criminalizing by stealing somebody's life. You criminalize by prejudging people. You criminalize by putting the label on all black people. That's what you do. You're criminalizing. That's criminalizing right there. And um, it's sad. It is so sad. And God ain't pleased. And I feel sorry for you all. I do. Because God takes great records. He knows everything from the kneel to the nat. He knows the reason why, how it happened, when it happened, and what was the reason why it happened. And the pictures that you all paint just to win a case is wrong on so many levels. It is just dead wrong. But you're going to give an account of that. Every last one of you. Mm -hmm. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Subscribe. Have a good one.